Morning all. Welcome to a wall of text. So yesterday I did my video on my honest opinion of all 32 franchises in the National Hockey League. And it would seem that my comments on the Florida Panthers, A, in some cases were misconstrued, and B, there's some touchiness. And I get it. I totally get it. I absolutely totally get it. So last night I thought, you know, I'll put together a, a, a madness style board and we can discuss that in the morning. It's the morning, so we shall discuss. So when Florida came into the league, they played out of Miami Arena. And it was not an ideal setup. Uh, this was not a building that attracted the kind of attendance I think the NHL would have wanted. Uh, it started out with 14,190 fans per game. Uh, they started out as well with the 33, 34, and 17 record. Roger Nielsen behind the bench. Absolutely fantastic record. Of course, with Nielsen, he was known for getting a lot of jobs. And he got a lot of jobs because he didn't last very long at the jobs he had. So, his second season behind the bench in Miami would be his final one. Uh, the attendance that year was 14,192 on average. And uh, their record was 20, 22, and 6. One thing with the Florida Panthers is there hasn't been sustained success. What we're starting to see, and with them now being in the Stanley Cup Final, as I'm recording this, uh, we're starting to see some sustained success. And I talked about this years ago. So uh, we'll keep going through this, and I'll get to what I'm talking about here. So 95-96, the big year, Miami Arena, uh, sees this team go all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. But the attendance numbers were not good, 13,278. Uh, they were they finished 41 31 and 10 so they had a very good regular season they went all the way to the stanley cup final and that was with doug mclean behind the bench so mclean honestly really really uh became a folk hero as the coach of that team and of course he had the rats on the ice with melon beast rat trick and all that 96 97 we see the attendance come up to 14,703. they're still at miami arena uh, their record, 35-28-19, but they get eliminated in the first round in 1997. And then 97-98, again, 14,703 fans per game in Miami Arena, and they finished the season 24-43-15. and uh, And there were two different coaches that year. McLean gets let go, and then Brian Murray stepped behind the bench. Now, Brian Murray uh, did not stay behind the bench. Terry Murray takes over the following season. So it was one of those oddities that happened where you'd have Terry Murray and Brian Murray who looked very, very similar. And so it was, it was kind of odd. Sort of like when you go from one setter to another, right? So <clears throat> under Terry Murray in 98, 99, they moved to Florida Live Arena, which was not called Florida Live Arena at the time. But since the arenas changed names a few times for the sake of keeping it clear, I wanted to make sure that it was clear that they've been in the same building from 98, 99 through until now. And their attendance that first year was 18,493 fans per game, proving it can work in this market. Absolutely can. They finished 30, 34, and 18 under Terry Murray. They missed the playoffs. And this is part of the problem. In order to generate interest in the Florida Panthers, I think a playoff appearance was important. And there wasn't a lot of that. So 99-2000, their attendance dropped off to 15,981 per game. Uh, the record 43-27, 6 and 6. Uh, they finished in the playoffs, but they got knocked out in the first round. So what happens is, from 96 through till almost now, they couldn't get out of the first round if they did make it, and they didn't make it very often. 2000-2001, uh, their attendance dips to 14,679 per game. They're still playing out of Florida Live Arena, of course. Even now, that's where they're playing out of. Their record, 22-38-13-9. Uh, Murray was let go, and Dwayne Sutter takes over the team. And that would continue into the following season. Well, 0-1-0-2, their attendance actually comes up to 16,074 per game. 22-44-10-6 uh, was the record. And Mike Keenan would take over behind the bench. So this is at a time where Keenan was jumping around between teams a lot and didn't necessarily have the effect on the teams he took over that you would have you would have wanted. Uh, this was a Florida team that was seen as being better than their record. The idea was, well, you get Iron Mike behind the bench and he can he can scare them straight and get them going and it just didn't work. Uh, so 2002-2003, their attendance drops again to 15,428. Uh, their record shows you why their attendance would drop too. 24, 36, 13, and 9. So again, we can get into the not drawing. We can also talk about the fact that there's not a lot of success here. 0304, 
15,936 fans per game. So the attendance goes up even though the record doesn't. Uh, not really anyways. They finished 28, 35, 15, and 4. They had three. Three coaches. They go through Keenan first and then Rick Dudley and then John Torchetti took over as well. So that's three different coaches. And then 05, 06, they go to Jacques Martin. So Jacques Martin takes over behind the bench. The attendance goes up above 16,000 for the first time in a few years to 16,014 on average. Uh, their record, 37, 34, and 11. So the record does get better under Jacques Martin. And he gets a few years to try to figure this out. So 2006, 2007, 15,370 fans in attendance on average. A record of 35, 31, and 16. So again, they're not in the playoffs. They're a bit above 500. This is a frustrating period for uh, Florida where they're good enough to not get those top prospects and top draft picks, but they're not good enough uh, to make the playoffs and, and, again, not bad enough to get those top draft picks and prospects. So 07, 08, their, their attendance stays about the same, 15,436 on average. Uh, their uh, record, 38, 35, and 9. So, again, they're above 500, and they're not playing badly, but they're not playing well enough to get over the hump. So the following season, 08 09, we see Pete DeBoer take over. They finished 41 31 or 41 30 and 11. Uh, 15,621 fans in attendance on average, and they barely missed the playoffs that year. 2009 2010, 15,146 fans per game, a record of 32 37 and 13. So, in and amidst all this, there's a lot of turmoil off the ice with the team. And they're also kind of known for being cheap and not necessarily spending to the cap, which is something that's changed recently. So 2010, 2000, or 2009, 2010, 15,146 fans per game. The record drops to 32, 37, and 13. The following season, 2010, 2011, their attendance actually comes back up a little bit. 15,685 fans per game. The record 30, 40, and 12. So they're back to being mediocre. And, you know, not necessarily, um, it, and it, it never felt like they were tanking or they were rebuilding. They just weren't very good. 2011-2012, uh, things get better, and so does the attendance for the team. But 2011-2012, uh, the 16,628 fans per game, they watched the team go 38, 26, and 18, and they're in the first round, and that's the first year under Kevin Deneen. So Kevin Deneen takes over. And they make the playoffs. 2012-2013, can they follow it up with another playoff appearance? The answer is no. Uh, but the attendance was up to 16,992 per game. Their record, 15, 27, and 6. So it's, it's not a great scenario here for Florida. And then the following season, the numbers drop. Uh, in 2013-2014, they're down to 14,525 fans per game. The record, 29, 35, and 8. Uh, Deneen gets let go. Peter Horacek takes over behind the bench. And December 19th of 2014, the team's owner claims the team has only made the profit once, or made a profit once in their entire existence. So for all these seasons, they've made money once. And of course, that's that's red meat for, for Canadian hockey fans who want, right, the Quebec Nordiques. So that was a conversation at the time of, well, if you're losing money and this team's been there for over 20 years, then you got to move them to Quebec because that's the answer to everything. Um, you know, car breaks down, move it to Quebec. 2014-2015, uh, Canada's a weird country. 2014-2015, the attendance bottomed out. 11,271 per game. The record 38, 29, and 15. And this is the first year they had under Gerard Gallant. So again, the coaching just changes all the time. Now, December 8th of 2015... Uh, Broward County reworked the arena lease and allowed the Panthers $86 million in tourist taxes. That's what it's labeled as. And the team uh, had lost $36 million in 2014-2015. So $36 million lost in the year where they had just over 11,000 fans per game. So that's less than a decade ago. Um, and the lease that they signed runs through 2028. Now... In the event that they lost $100 million over their first seven years, they were allowed to basically say, we're out of here in a year. They were allowed to give one year's notice and back out. And that's why I said there's there's outs with this. 
Um, the, yesterday's video, I said there's outs, and yes, there absolutely is. I'm not saying they're taking it, but it's there. If they lost $100 million over that amount of time, and it is possible when you consider $36 million lost in 2014, 2015. Uh, 2015, 2016, things get better for Florida. They average 15,384 fans per game, and the team's better on the ice. 47, 26, and 9. Again, they're out in the first round. So the problem you're getting into now is you're 20 years past them being in the Stanley Cup final, and they haven't really done much of anything since then. They haven't been out of the first round. You're not generating local buzz. Uh, 2016, 2017, the attendance drops off to 14,621 per game. Uh, they finished 35, 36, and 11, and famously fired Gerard Gallant. Tom Rowe takes over behind the bench. That was a disaster. Uh, Gallant fired because he wasn't employing the players correctly, as according to uh, what the advanced stats and statisticians told him to do. And so he was out. And things didn't get better with Tom Rowe behind the bench, deploying players the way that management wanted. So 2017-2018, Bob Bugner takes over. The attendance drops down to 13,851 per game. Their record 44-30-8 is good, but they missed the playoffs. 2018-2019, uh, they had 13,262 fans per game. So now you're back down to the lowest number they'd had since the season where they lost $36 million. 36-32-14 uh, record. And the following year, they hire Joel Quenville. Joel Quenville, known for getting the best out of a team, and he does in 2019-2020 with Florida. Uh, they had 14,105 fans per game. Their record was 35-26-8, and eight, and they lost in the qualifying round. Uh, that, that was one that really just got me because I really thought, well, Florida should be able to beat the Islanders, and they didn't. And then, of course, the Islanders went on a bit of a run after that. So 2020-2021 is not applicable because there weren't fans in attendance that of course is the year that the NHL loses a ton of money just on a whole it lost like billions off what projections were to be for that season and that's why we're still in the flat cap situation we're in because half of that money is owed by the players and the NHL owners didn't actually take that from the players other than via escrow and saying you owe us uh, so the, the salary cap didn't drop, and that was something I thought at the time would have made sense. Have the salary cap drop to reflect that drop in in money, and then have the salary cap go back up. The problem, of course, being if you did that, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. Do you adjust contracts down? Because you're going to have teams that are way over the cap. Anyways, uh, so the following season, 2021-2022, with fans back in attendance, 14,811 fans per game. The team goes 58-18-6. Fantastic regular season. They win the President's Trophy, and they got into the second round. So you want to generate some buzz. You get a little bit further in the playoffs. Uh, Quenville was replaced partway through the season by Andrew Burnett. And Burnett, I thought, did a decent job. And so Burnett right now is in the running for potentially the job in Columbus. I think Burnett should get another job uh, as a head coach in the NHL. But at the same time, the the... Uh, team decided we're going to look in another direction, which was gutsy. You've got a team coming off of a President's Trophy win, and you bring in Paul Maurice, who was coming off of some rough years in Winnipeg, 2022-2023. Uh, Their average attendance this year, 16,682. Yes, the attendance, got, the attendance went up as the season went along. Yes, the attendance has been high throughout the playoffs. Uh, their record, 42-32-8. And, and this number, 16,682, is the highest they've had in 10 years since the 16,992, and it's right about in line with 2011-2012. The trick for them has been, so they're finalists now, and of course, home dates are gold when it comes to playoffs for owners, um, because you're done paying the players. The players players have all their pay uh, decided and, and paid out by the end of the regular season, other than your cash bonuses that roll over into the next season's salary cap. But the reality is that, you know, this team now going to the finals, that's generated ten, probably tens of millions more for the team. And so this helps quite a bit. This means that you don't have to worry about losing $36 million this year. Uh, they, they very likely turned a profit this year. Now that 16,682 fans per game is ahead of Buffalo, New Jersey, Anaheim, Winnipeg, San Jose, and Arizona. Arizona, we know 4,600 in the mullet. It's the butt of everybody's jokes right now. Buffalo, rebuilding, half-empty building, New Jersey, 
has always had issues with drawing to capacity in that building. Uh, Anaheim rebuilding, and it's a market, too, that the tenant seems to fluctuate with the strength of the team. Surprisingly to me is Winnipeg. Surprisingly to me is Winnipeg not selling out every night. I even had to do a double check on that because that seemed odd to me that Winnipeg isn't selling out every night. And so that's something to keep an eye on as well because I don't know how much how much uh, profit teams are making here necessarily. That information is a lot harder to find than one might think. You might be like, ah, oh, you should be able to find out what teams are most profitable. I mean, you can find out through Forbes which teams are most valuable, but to actually find out, well, here's the actual money, here's here's which teams are making or losing money, it's it's not as easy to find that information as it once was. Uh, and San Jose, and we know San Jose, that market, uh, dealing with a rebuild, and just it's been miserable there for a while. With Florida, that's part of it. And it's something I said years ago in a video. I was talking about Florida and Arizona and specifically, and I said, these are organizations that have never given their fans a reason to come out and buy a ticket every single night if you're looking for success on the ice. It just hasn't been there. Now with Florida, we're seeing that, and we're seeing the numbers turn around. And we're, we're also seeing some really good management in, in Florida, and it is an organization teams want to play for. Uh, back in 99, 2000, and 2000, 2001, Pavel Burry had back-to-back 50-goal seasons, 59 one year, 58 the other those are the only two 50 goal seasons for anybody in florida history i don't know if that's going to change because i mean barkov's not a 50 goal scorer kachuk might hit 50 goals uh huberto had 115 points for them last year kachuk had 109 this year those are the two best seasons for anybody in a florida jersey uh the interesting thing to me is that now kachuk is seen as like he's the template he's what everybody should be in the playoffs when coming out of calgary i didn't hear that a lot it is just interesting to me how during a playoff run, all of a sudden the narratives will change. And then it's, well, why can't you be more like Florida? When who would have said that coming into this year? Uh, so November 7th of 2022, the most recent that I could find, uh, the team was valued at $595 million uh, ahead of only the Coyotes. The Coyotes valued at $465 million, And they're valued at $5 million less than the Columbus Blue Jackets, who sit 30th in valuations. That will change. Forbes' next list is going to change. It's going to go up a lot. The Ottawa Senators are going to drive that. That sale is absolutely going to cause other valuations to go up. Plus, Florida's valuation will go up based on attendance and based on some stability this franchise is showing. Uh, this, this is actually sustainable for a change. This is a team that has made the playoffs in four straight seasons. They made it in 2021 as well. And... At times I've seen that they're overrated. At times I've seen people say, oh, they're underrated and we should have known this was what they were capable of. I, I think the thing is, Florida got hot at the right time. Once game five against Boston took place, they were on a heater. And you can't predict that. And as a GM, you can't plan for that. You can't say, okay, so I'm going to put this team together. And then they're going to go on a heater in a year and a half. Like these these guys I'm adding, they're just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow up. This is going to be great. Basically, a GM's job is to put all the pieces together, uh, see them out on the ice, and, and cross their fingers and hope that it works. Um, so, a lot of credit to the players, a lot of credit to the Florida Panthers. Interestingly enough, they've gone through, including interim, by my count, 18 coaches in 29 seasons. That's not stability. Uh, you look at Nashville, who've been in the league almost as long, and they've had three, isn't it? It's three, I believe. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, just Just three. And, and you look at Nashville, and it, it feels like they've had more stability throughout. Uh, nine playoff appearances in 29 seasons for Florida. So again, I understand that with ticket prices and the building might be a little bit far out for people to get to. I get it. I've seen all of it. And the playoff appearances would cause, you know, somebody to say, I, I could go out there, but I mean, look at the ticket price, then I got to get there, and they're probably going to lose, all that. Um, and, and being in the Vancouver market, I understand that feeling. Now, their UFAs this summer are interesting because their cap space next year is $10,262,499. Uh, their, their free agents this summer are Eric and Mark Stahl. Should they win the Stanley Cup, they might both retire. Or maybe they try to talk Jordan into coming down to Florida and they stick around. Or maybe Eric and Mark sign in Carolina for next year. Um... Brad Kogudis, UFA, I think he has driven up his value tremendously throughout these playoffs. 
Um, Lion has been quite good when he's been called upon. And Hornquist, who's on LTIR, uh, his career might be at, at an end. But what's interesting, too, is that there's always the argument about how a team that has a $10 million contract can't win the Stanley Cup. And I've seen that argument on this channel as recently as, I think, two, two months ago. But both Barkov and Bobrovsky have a cap hit of $10 million. Both of them. So there's a very good chance we're going to have somebody with a $10 million cap hit win the Stanley Cup. And then that talking point drops by the wayside. So for Florida, I, I think in order to keep the attendance where it is and keep that excitement up, they just have to stay good. They just have to go out there. They have to put out a, a good, entertaining product. I'm glad this year people went out to watch it because last year this team was on a fantastic run and there were a lot of empty seats. It was very visible how many empty seats there were in Florida and there's been none of that throughout this run. Uh, I've always rooted for Florida in that they're one of those ultimate underdogs. It is interesting to me that it's still referred to as a real non-traditional market when they've been in the league for, for 30 years. Uh, this, is, this is a nice long run in, in Florida. And again, that lease is until 2028. We'll see if anything changes between now and 2028. But if this team continues to have this success, I mean, there's always the possibility that they might want to look at another building in Florida. But also keep in mind how hard the NHL has worked on keeping a team in Arizona that's had more drama than Florida. Um, I, I don't know if they've had more financial difficulties. I, I guess, I mean, they've gone bankrupt, right? Uh, but the reality is that the Florida, there's been more of an appearance of of stability when it comes to the off the ice stuff, and outside of Broward County and and some of the discussions in 2014, 2015, and again, you know, the attendance is always going to rile people up if they're not looking at a full building. But yeah, it feels like that stability is there now, and hopefully that continues. So I wasn't trying to take any shots at Florida. Definitely didn't mean to if it came across that way. And uh, there you go. So they're in the Stanley Cup final. Are they going to win it? I, I do think that the time off that they're going to have before the Stanley Cup final starts will help and hurt. Uh, it's just a matter of once you get past the first period of that, that first game, it shouldn't make a big difference. They should be right back into it. And again, it, if if a team has a hard time you know, getting up and getting motivated for a Stanley Cup final... I don't know what to tell them. That That's kind of crazy. But we'll see what happens. Uh, it's been an exciting spring, and Florida has finally uh, managed to find their way back to the Stanley Cup final for the first time since 1996. And then it's a matter of, can they win it? What's interesting is their record's very similar to 96. 96, they were 41, 31, and 10. This year, 42, 32, and 8. So very, very similar record, and 10 games above 500 both seasons. So we'll see if they can do it this year. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.